So you've got your Holly EFI system installed now, but it won't go into closed loop or learn? Well, let's talk about why. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we're going to be diving into a specific topic that a lot of us have dealt with including me and this is one that will cause you a lot of confusion, frustration, searching the forums, digging through a bunch of text posts that link you to other posts, to other posts, and other posts and it is why is your Holly EFI system not going into closed loop or learned? And this is going to cover about any of the uh, latest Holly EFI stuff. Terminator, Dominator, HP, and even the Sniper. And there's a couple things to keep in mind whenever it comes to the way the Holly systems work. Where you have a base fuel calculation and then you have a bunch of modifiers for things like startup, acceleration enrichment, etc. And those modifiers are active on the base fuel table. And on top of that, because they are active, as soon as that happens, it takes you out of closed loop or learn. Which is very interesting because on the advanced tables that you can have, where you are modifying base fuel flow for things like flex fuel, you can actually choose whether or not to inhibit closed loop and learn, whereas any of the standard fuel modifiers that Holly has put into the software automatically inhibits that. And if you have a couple things set up wrong, uh, it can cause you to not go into closed loop learn. Or you might have a very rare situation like we had on this where our TPS signal was causing us to not go into closed loop. So let's go ahead, jump into the software and take a look at what's going on. Okay, for this setup, we're just going to be looking at one of the base calibrations because we don't really care. It's going to carry over, as I said, to about everything that we're working on here. So we've got our base fuel in here. This is a standard VE uh, table setup. What we're looking for, though, is any of these things like acceleration enrichment and fuel modifiers. And so acceleration enrichment is one of the big ones that I've been fighting with, so we'll talk about that one here in a second. But let's look at the fuel modifiers, and it might be underneath a different tab based on which platform you're on, but it all kind of ties back into the same place. And in this case, we've got coolant temp enrichment and air, air fuel ratio offset. Now, anytime these tables are active and you've got anything besides a 100 or a 0 in here, they're going to inhibit closed loop operations. So whenever you first fire the car up, one of the things that I like to do is go ahead and put a hundred lower down in these tables to make sure that we can go into closed loop right away. Now, once we get to the point where we get kind of the idle dialed in and stuff like that, we can come back, restore these settings back to as they were. That way we do have some enrichment uh, from the get go, but maybe on first start, it's a little bit easier to keep this stuff from fighting us. We have the same issue with the air temp enrichment. And so on a, what I find on a lot of times on this is I end up taking this table to 100% across the board. If you see right here, unless you're at 128 degrees, this table will fight you and keep you out of closed loop. Really weird that it's allowed to do that. Now, acceleration enrichment, the two big ones that we're looking at on this one are going to be your AETPS rate of change versus and your MAP rate of change. And these two tables should only be active whenever you are accelerating. This is basically your fuel shot, you know, your, your acceleration enrichment there. And we have the option of using this rate of change blanking. Now, what we have to do sometimes is bump up the rate of change blanking to help filter out some TPS noise or some map noise, but ideally we want those numbers to be as low as possible without them going into acceleration enrichment on its own whenever you're not, whenever you're on steady state throttle and things like that. Because if you get those numbers too big, what ends up happening is whenever you roll onto the throttle, you don't get that little additional fuel to meet that onrush of air and you'll have a lean condition. So keep that in mind. Uh, you know, bigger throttle bodies may like a lower number on the TPS rate of change blanking. Uh, smaller throttle bodies might like a bigger number there. And then the map one, depending on how steady your map circuit is, that one doesn't seem to be quite as touchy, at least in my experience. I have more of an issue of the TPS rate of change. And we're going to take a look now at one of the logs that I pulled on the Smoke Monster here so you can see exactly what kind of issues that I was having. 
So I've got a log open right now versus the data log that it was pulled from. Doesn't really matter. The nice thing about it is, is I can make the data log window small. I'm not necessarily looking directly at the data on the data log itself so much as I'm looking at the point in the table where I think the issue is. And as you can see, we've got a red bar here with a dot showing the reading. As we scroll through this data log, you can see this thing jumping around. It's just all over the place. And that is not good, especially if we go over here into some place where we have steady throttle through here. The RPMs are just around 2,500 steadily, and you can see this thing is jumping up to around 13 to 20 sometimes. But we had a setting of 25 in there for the rate of change blanking that was causing some issues where it would go a little bit lean on tipping because it wasn't seeing the uh, fuel or it wasn't doing the fuel until we exceeded 25% divided by second times 10 as you can see down here what the rate of change is and that's not going to give us good drivability and so now we can come over here and take a look at two separate logs of a before and after and what I ended up doing was my wiring for my TPS signal was ran down the driver side uh, of the manifold and it was close to the injectors and I thought what we were seeing was the injectors firing was causing some uh, interference on the TPS signal wire and so let's take a look at a before and after. Now I know what you're saying first things first whoa where are we in Megalog Viewer HD? Well I prefer to look at a lot of these data logs in Megalog Viewer HD and specifically the Holly stuff because you can't build out histograms. And I'll do a video on this later on that kind of shows you why. But for now, let's take a look at a before and after where we've got a issue here. And I've got this kind of uh, plotted out here showing our TPS versus our TPS rate of change, which is our yellow line versus our RPM. And if you look at just how crazy all the data is in there, it is just constantly spiking. Right here is a great example of we're just cruising around, probably about the same area at 2000 RPMs and this data is everywhere. Now, if we come over here and grab a log from after I moved it, now look at all of it. Look how smooth everything is on this. We're in closed loop a lot more often. If you look down here below, you can actually see the adjustments on the fly that the closed loop and learn system is doing to the fuel table. It's actually populating data now and everything looks good. We could still use this as an idea of what we need to set our TPS rate of change blanking to, uh, but what we're looking for is maybe kind of the highest peak whenever we're in a steady state mode where you can see our actual TPS sensor is pretty smoothed out. And so we've got a couple of anomalies here. There's a 26, we wouldn't want to filter out that much. And for the most part, maybe 16, still too much. But if we were to set that filter around seven, we should be good. There's a prime example of a 6.9 that would have gotten filtered out. Uh, a 7.1, that may have thrown a little fuel in there, but you know it wouldn't have been so much that it would have caused much of a drivability issue because the way this table is skewed from zero to seven, you know, we're looking at a 13, 14% or 13 to 14 pounds per hour. And then the percentage of how much it would have been is based off of the engine coolant temp. So at that point in time, it would have only done 98% of that 14 pounds per hour. That's what these additional tables are going to do as far as how they relate back to this. But you can see just by moving that wire away from the injectors, everything cleaned up and now the car goes into closed loop more consistently, it builds better learn tables. And so those are the big things that you want to keep an eye out for. Last but not least, we want to double check our closed loop settings and make sure all of those are set right and they're pretty straightforward. We go underneath the system parameters and look for closed loop learn. We want to make sure that enable closed loop is checked. Generally starting off, we're not going to want anything else checked underneath here because we want it to be operating as much as possible. We have the option of doing a minimum coolant temp. Once again, whenever the coolant enrichment is enabled, it's still not going to go into closed loop anyway, so that's not much of a problem. Learn is the same way. We want to make sure that base fuel learn is enabled, and we're generally not concerned about some of these other things where RPM to enter learn comes into, maybe you have a very aggressive cam, and so the AFRs hunt a lot because of the aggressive cam. You can actually disable closed loop at idle and then manually adjust your values until you find a good AFR reading at idle, and then just have closed loop and learn enable whenever you get up on throttle. 
Whenever it comes to our limits, I like to start out with high limits on here and then lower them down. And we always want to leave our base fuel learn gain very high to start out with. That allows it to make all the changes it sees. As everything gets closer, we want to narrow these things down. We would go down from 75%, maybe down to 20 or even 10% on our compensation limits. And then our learn gain, we're going to work that thing down. Hopefully we get to the point where this thing is running basically just off closed loop and learn isn't really doing much. And then the same thing, our closed loop compensation limits right now are 45%. I would like to eventually get this down to where maybe 15% to 20% is the max compensation limits that the closed loop system needs to do uh, for all the varied driving throughout the different seasons, things like that. Well, hopefully this helps some of you guys out that are out there dealing with these Holly EFI platforms. They're great units, but they can be very frustrating. Whenever you can't do them, get them to do what you're trying to get them to do, like go into closed loop and learn. And there is a few small things that we touched on here that can bite you in the backside that will make it even more frustrating to the point where you get like me, where you just want to jerk it out of the car sometimes and throw the dang thing away. But if you do a little bit of research, it's often easy to find out what is keeping you from going into closed loop. Check the basics with the uh, fuel modifier tables, make sure that your closed loop tables are enabled, and then check things like your uh, TPS or your manifold air pressure rate of change tables to make sure that they're not activating also. So if all of those things are set up and working properly, there's no reason why it should not go into closed loop or learn. Listen, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, you know some other tables that might cause some issues on closed loop on the Holly platform, go ahead and hit up the comments down below. As always, subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me out greatly. Let me know if there's any specific Holly stuff that you want me to do videos on. I'm more than happy to. And we're going to dive into a little bit more of the tuning side of it here on the Smoke Monster very soon. And we're also going to take a look at Megalog Viewer and how I like to set up histograms so I can read data from Holly data logs and see what's going on on my actual VE table instead of having to scroll through that graph or use a scatter plot. So make sure and stick around for that. But for now, I'm going to get back to it. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. And remember, ABT, always be tuning.